Lit lovers, welcome back to my channel, Crown Brown Books with your girl T. Happy New Year once again. I hope everyone's New Year is off to a great start, a productive start, starting some of those goals and resolutions that we all have proclaimed for this year. And we are fully seven days in. It is January 7th and a lot is going on. Now, again, we haven't been in the new year for that long. It's literally seven days. And so much is happening in front of our eyes, behind the scenes, you name it. It's always something going on. Like, I said, let me share the top seven. Like, we're seven days in. So I thought of seven things. A good four of them have been, you know, really sitting with me. Number one, this is most important because we're alive. As long as you are watching this, you are alive. We are in good health. Even if, you know, you may be dealing with maybe a cold, flu, or headache, migraine, or you're just not emotionally on point, we are alive. You know, a lot of people can't say their relatives or friends or co-workers made it to see the new year or the first full week, seven days into the new year. So we're alive, we're well, that's top number one. And we have to be thankful for that. And knowing that we are alive and some of us are well, but we're alive. That means we have had another day, another chance. And if we're able to see tomorrow, there's another day, another chance, another opportunity to launch some goals, to pursue some dreams, to do things that we have written on vision boards, written on walls, written in our planners. Like let's maximize our time like we have it so we have to use it number two as of january 4th cohorts a and b both groups of students have returned to the building for five days a week yes all of the students who were blended there's no more learning at home for the blended students there are of course hundreds of thousands of students who are still fully remote and the numbers are still low. I believe we're not even looking at 150 students in the building at, at you know, the same time. But the good thing is, is that five days a week, we're in the building, the students are happy, they're able to see their friends who were on opposite days because remember, one group, was in the school building Wednesday and Friday and the other group was in the building Tuesday and Thursday. But now they're all back and we're having a good time. Things are going well so far. So good. So everything is on the up and up with that. And I'm super happy because I don't have to talk to them through the computer. I'm not getting booted off. They're not getting booted off. So it's a good time. Now for number three, this one has really, really been sitting with me from January 1st because it involves things that I was doing for the entire month of December. And if you have been chilling with me and supporting me as you should and as kindly requested, you would know I'm referring to Vlogmas. Now, I'm going to share this. I really like vlogging. Now, when I started out in September, I did maybe about two or three vlogs between October and December, I believe. No, maybe about four, because I did vlog the first three days of the return for back to school. Right, so it's probably about four, five tops vlogs prior to Vlogmas. And while vlogging, I'm like, I like vlogging, like this is cool. You know, you're doing things in the moment, you're showing things, and I just like the whole vibe. And when I started researching other vloggers, small and big, I was like, yeah, like they do cool stuff. Like, 
videos and um, tutorials is all good. Like, I love that too. But blogging was hidden for me back then. But I know me sometimes when things are new, you do it a couple of times and everything's like, oh, nice. I love it. I love it. So I just put it to the side. But when Blogmas came around from December 1st all the way to Christmas, I did each day. Now, truth be told, there were only three videos that was posted during Blogmas that was pre-recorded. So every video that you watch during Blogmas took place that day. And I would run home, edit the best way I could, <laughs> and post. The thumbnails were a hot mess, and they still are, but I'm working on it. But I was saying every day as the days went by, like, I like vlogging, I like vlogging. And, and the three videos that were pre-recorded, I had to pre-record them because there was so much going on during that week, well, during those couple of days that... I would not have been able to vlog like I was unable to vlog for a couple of days so I had no choice but to pre-record but even after vlogmas was over again if you were supporting and chilling with me and commenting and liking you also know that I vlogged for the seven days of Kwanzaa so the entire December and January 1st I vlogged yes and yes it was a bit much at times but I like vlogging so I'm thinking about vlogging much more or possibly transferring the bulk of what I'm trying to do here into a vlog channel but we'll see on a sad note one of the top black authors the Eric Jerome Dickey has gone on to his final resting place. He passed away and it was shocking. It was hurtful because I'm like, wow, this man, he's young, like early 50s, you know, mid 50s. Beautiful career, endless books. Like he is the hood writer. Like he has written classics hood classics books that will have you reading from the beginning to the end in one day a couple of hours and you're looking for the upcoming book or you're trying to backtrack to get previous books like the eric jerome dickey is a big deal so the lit world has taken a big loss we this this is a big hit because one of the greats has gone on, you know? So all things literature, the other authors, you know, they were talking about it, articles online. But I want to encourage you, in his death, let's treat him like many do rappers and movie stars. You know, they become triple famous in their death than they were while they were living. So if you can... Google, hit up the streets, because if you live in a black community, we know some street hustlers that they have a line of books and you might just luck up. And if not, Amazon, other Barnes and Nobles has his work, like purchase and let's keep his legacy going. Another big star the music world and the acting world we learned this week that dr dre suffered from a brain aneurysm and another young healthy looking even though looks are always deceiving so let me take that back very young very talented like he brought us some classics as a <laughs> the great producer on the west coast i mean I don't want to throw up signs and I'm throwing up the wrong thing and people start to question me, but you know, West Side. So we want to just send some love to Dr. Dre, his family, his close friends, like love, energy, strength, all that good stuff. 
speedy recovery. Of course, rest up. Don't rush back to work. I'm talking like this man is going to hear this message. <laughs> All right. Now, on a serious note, Gotham is in trouble. Yeah. Lit York City is in trouble. Yep. The city is like, according to the New York Times and the Newsday, like, listen, I'm not making it up. The, the article is there. I'm going to, you know, going to post it. The homelessness, crime, wait, poverty, food lines. Like, none of this is new to Lit York City. Here in New York, there's always been an issue with homelessness. Shelters are overcrowded. No matter where you go, no matter what borough you're in, you're going to see someone sleeping in the streets, sleeping in the subways. They're going to be next to anything that can keep them warm. And they will be begging for money, like the panhandlers. Some will just stand out. And this happens all over the place. But it's like double now in New York City. Like ridiculous shootings through the roof. Just through the roof. So according to the article, New York City is doomed. No one wants to live here. People are running up out of here. The rent in some areas going down because there's nothing to compete with. No one wants to live here. Everyone is headed to Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, like they tapping out. Not only is it just the poverty, like our leaders, they, they going crazy. No one is communicating clearly with the other. So you have the governor of New York, Cuomo, like I'll give it to Cuomo, you know, all leaders, no matter what their role is, they have, they will have their plus, They'll have their negatives. So Cuomo, he's okay. Is he perfect? No. Has any other leader been perfect? No. So him and de Blasio, they're always at it. Schools stay open. No, schools closed. Schools stay open. No, sn snow days, no snow days. Oh, how much money? No, they don't get no money. De Blasio is trying to tell Cuomo now, like, listen, this whole thing with the injections, what do they call that, the vaccinations, you have to chill, like, take time. However, Cuomo, he's like, no. If a hospital has vaccines, start giving out these vaccines. Like, give it to the people. Give it to the workers. Like, give it to the patients. And it's like, easy. De Blasio was like, easy. Like, my man, you can't threaten nobody. Because Cuomo's saying... You lose it, you lose it, and I'm going to find you. You don't give it out, you'll get fined, and you won't get no more. Shutting it down. Cuomo is the head boss in charge, right? De Blasio, you know, he's like, yo, this is my city. I'm going to do what I feel is right, and I'm going to let the people know what is what when the time is right. So that's one drama. Now you have the schools. Now, that includes Cuomo, de Blasio, the Chancellor, Carranza. He doesn't care about anything. Then you have the UFT president, Mogul. Mogul's like, listen, the numbers go up over 9% on a consecutive seven-day period. Schools are going to shut down again. Here's de Blasio. No! New York City public schools are the safest building in New York City, the safest place to be. So safe that only elementary students are back in school. Middle school, high school students are still at home learning remotely. It doesn't matter if they're blended. All middle school and all high school students are still at home. They don't have a return date for them to return to the school building. And why is that? We know why that is. Because the little kids can't stay at home alone and babysit themselves. Whereas, you know, preteens and teens, they can. Now, Mogul was saying, listen, remember that's the UFT president. He's saying, nah. If, if these numbers 
continue to go up, we'll possibly walk out. Like, we're not showing up. We shutting it down. So here you have all these leaders, all of these leaders, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You don't know who to believe. Now, the state has their record numbers and the city has their record numbers. They don't have to match. Like, the state doesn't have to have nine and the city doesn't have to. Cuomo was saying he's counting it statewide. De Blasio say, no, we got to keep it within the city. Mogul was like, oh, we're not having this. The teachers and students will not be affected. We're not going in those buildings if the numbers continue to rise. Do I know if I'll be at work? If the, I don't, we don't even know because the communication is not clear. There's no definitive statement, answer, response to us. And it's a big disservice, not to the adults, yes, to the staff, yes, it is. However, it's more of a disservice to the parents because some parents, they have to juggle around, find childcare beg for people to watch them during afters help them with homework schoolwork like it's a big disservice so the city like we're in shambles like really we're in shambles so that was number six guys like Cuomo de Blasio Mogu that's number six just pray for Gotham City pray for Nick Lit York City play play Pray for New York City. Like, pray for us. We, we need it. We need it. And last but not least, no surprise here, though. Remember, top seven in seven days, the D.C. shenanigans that played out yesterday. The shenanigans that played out yesterday. I'm not even going to get into it. There's no need to discuss it. We all know. I, I didn't watch. But how could you not know? Everyone is talking about it. It's all over social media. People will text you, email you pictures and videos. Like you care. Or like you want to be engaging and things like that. But the nonsense played out. The shenanigans are really relative, like everything is so relative to the book that I'm reading and I'll be done with soon, cast. Like, Isabel Wilkerson, like she talks about all of this privilege. Privilege, like that word is so powerful and it is so definitive of what carried on yesterday, privilege. And their ability to do because they will not be penalized, right? They can get away with things that we shouldn't even be thinking. Like, so much of that is in this book. Like, so much. Every scenario that she discusses in this book has it's very similar, like, t matches up so well. The systems, the caste systems that are designed by those in command to divide and to conquer and to take control, to manipulate the different races, the different cultures. Anyway, I'm trying to do my best to really lay out a review. And this book is like so difficult to review because, I mean, it's simple because she discusses the systems between America, India, Germany, all of these different countries that place division based on skin color, based on what type of financial situation your family is in, the 
upper caste, the mid caste, the lower caste, right? And her personal experiences of being a professional black woman trying to do her thing in a racist country. She highlights so many historical events that have taken place in America as well as other countries that were a result of caste, of these caste systems, of these caste beliefs, caste practices. And it's really difficult to put in words because once you start to read, it's like watching those slave movies, like The Color Purple, all of the you know slave movies and the movies that shows how we were mistreated back in forever years. So it's like, how do you build up to just freely discuss without showing anger, without because I want to share it and share it, you know, in a smooth, calm way. Of course, in certain parts, it's gonna be ah, but for the most part, ease, so you can hear clearly and you can receive what I'm trying to share out to you. I can go on. Remember, the shenanigans is number seven. Number seven. It relates to the book cast that I am currently reading, and I will be finished with soon. Listen, let me know how your first week of the new year is going. What do you think about some of the things I discussed within the first seven? Remember, number one, we are alive, we're well, and if not, we are getting too well. We are on our way to being completely well. Number two, the kids is back. They're happy. I'm happy. Three, I want to vlog more. Okay, I really do. Number four, rest in peace to the Eric Jerome Dickey. Go out and get a piece of his work. Number five, Dr. Dre, love, strength, speedy recovery. Number six, Cuomo de Blasio. Y'all got to get it together. Mogul, we ready to ride out whatever it is we going to do. Seven, the shenanigans. Again, please don't forget. Please continue to do so. I know many of you have, and I appreciate it with everything in me. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell your neighbor. Tell a co-worker, tell a stranger, even tell a hater. Everything's lit over here at Crown Brown Books. Till the next video, I will see you later.